a letter to John Brown's family in regard to the Battle of Blackjack. Near Brown Station, Kansas Territory, June 1856. Dear wife and children, everyone, it is now about five weeks since I have seen a line from North Elba, or had any chance of writing you. During that period, we have passed through an almost constant series of very trying events. We were called to go to the relief of Lawrence, May 22nd, and every man, eight and all except Orson, turned out, he staying with the women and children, and to take care of the cattle. John was captain of a company to which Jason belonged. The other six were a little company by ourselves. On our way to Lawrence, we had learned that it had already been destroyed, and we encamped with John's company overnight. Next day our little company left, and during the day we stopped and searched three men. Lawrence was destroyed in this way. Their leading men had, as I think, decided in a very cowardly manner not to resist any process having any government official to serve it, notwithstanding the process might be wholly a bogus affair. The consequence was that a man called a United States Marshal came on with a horde of ruffians, which he called his posse, and after arresting a few persons, turned the ruffians loose on the defenseless people. They robbed the inhabitants of their money and other property, and even women of their ornaments, and burned considerable of the town. On the second day and evening, after we left John's men, we encountered quite a number of pro-slavery men, and took quite a number of prisoners. Our prisoners we let go, but we kept some four or five horses. We were immediately after this accused of murdering five men at Pottawatomie, and great efforts have since been made by the Missourians and their ruffian allies to capture us. John's company soon afterwards disbanded, and also the Osawatomie men. Jason started to go and place himself under the protection of the government troops, but on his way he was taken prisoner by the bogus men, and is yet a prisoner, I suppose. John tried to hide for several days, but from feelings of ungrateful conduct of those who ought to have stood by him, excessive fatigue, anxiety, and constant loss of sleep, he became quite insane, and in that situation gave up, or, as we are told, was betrayed at Osawatomie into the hands of the bogus men. We do not know all the truth about this affair. He has since, we are told, been kept in irons and brought to a trial before a bogus court the result of which we have not yet learned. We have great anxiety for both him and Jason, and numerous other prisoners with the enemy, who have all the while had the government troops sustain them. We can only commend them to God. The cowardly mean conduct of Osawatomie and vicinity did not save them, for the ruffians came on them, made numerous prisoners, fired their buildings, and robbed them, after this, a picked party of bogus men went to Brown Station, burned John's and Jason's houses and their contents to ashes, in which burning we have all suffered more or less. Orson and Boy have been prisoners, but were soon set at liberty. They are well and have not been seriously injured. Owen and I have come here for the first time to look at the ruins. All looks desolate and forsaken the grass and weeds fast covering up the signs that these places were lately the abodes of quiet families. After burning the houses, this self-same party of picked men, some forty in number, set out as they supposed, and was the fact, on the track of my little company, boasting with awful profanity that they would have our scalps. They, however, passed the place we were hid, and robbed a little town some four or five miles beyond our camp in the timber. I had omitted to say that some murders had been committed at the time Lawrence was sacked. On learning that this party were in pursuit of us, my little company, now increased to ten in all, started after them in company of a Captain Shore with eighteen men. He included June 1st. We were all mounted as we traveled. We did not meet them on that day, but took five prisoners, four of whom were their scouts and well-armed. We were out all night, but could find nothing of them until about six o'clock next morning, when we prepared to attack them at once, on foot, leaving Frederick and one Captain Shore's men to guard the horses. As I was much older than Captain Shore, the principal direction of the fight devolved on me. 
We got within about a mile of their camp before being discovered by their scouts, and then moved at a brisk pace, Captain Shore and men forming our left and my company the right. When within about sixty rods of the enemy, Captain Shore's men halted, by mistake, in a very exposed situation, and continued the fire, both his men and the enemy being armed with sharps rifles. My company had no long shooters. We, my company, did not fire a gun until we gained the rear of a bank, about fifteen or twenty rods to the right of the enemy, where we commenced, and soon compelled them to hide in a ravine. Captain Shore, after getting one of his men wounded and exhausted his ammunition, came with part of his men to the right of my position, much discouraged. The balance of his men, including the one wounded, had left the ground. Five of Captain Shore's men came boldly down and joined my company, and all but one man, wounded, helped to maintain the fight until it was over. I was obliged to give my consent that he should go after more help, when all his men left but eight, four of whom I persuaded to remain in a secure position, and there busied one of them in shooting the horses and mules of the enemy, which served for a show of fight. After the firing had continued for some two to three hours, Captain Pate, with twenty-three men, two badly wounded, laid down their arms to nine men, myself included, four of Captain Shore's men, and four of my own. One of my men, Henry Thompson, was badly wounded, and after continued his fire for an hour longer, was obliged to quit the ground. Three others of my company, but none of my family, had gone off. Salmon was dreadfully wounded by accident soon after the fight, but both he and Henry are fast recovering. A day or two after the fight, Colonel Sumner of the United States Army came suddenly upon us while fortifying our camp and guarding our prisoners, which, by the way, it had been agreed mutually should be exchanged for as many Free State men, John and Jason included, and compelled us to let go our prisoners without being exchanged, and to give up our horses and arms. They did not go more than two or three miles before they began to rob and injure Free State people. We consider this as in good keeping with the cruel and unjust course of the administration and its tools throughout the whole Kansas difficulty. Colonel Sumner also compelled us to disband, and we, being only a handful, were obliged to submit. Since then, we have, like David of old, had our dwelling with the serpents of the rocks and wild beasts of the wilderness, being obliged to hide away from our enemies. We are not disheartened. Though nearly destitute of food, clothing, and money, God, who have not given us over to the will of our enemies, but moreover delivered them into our hand, will, we humbly trust, still keep and deliver us. We feel assured that he who sees not as man see does not lay the guilt of innocent blood to our charge. I ought to have said that Captain Shore and his men stood their ground nobly in their unfortunate but mistaken position during the early part of the fight. I ought to say further that Captain Abbott, being some miles distance with a company, came onward promptly to sustain us, but could not reach us till the fight was over. After the fight, numerous Free State men who would not be got out before were on hand, and some of them, I am ashamed to add, were very busy not only with the plunder of our enemies, but with our private effects, leaving us, while guarding our prisoners and providing in regard to them, much poorer than before the battle. If under God this letter reaches you, so it can be read, I wish it at once carefully copied, and a copy of it sent to Garrett Smith. I know of no other way to get these facts and our situation before the world, nor when I can write again. Owen has ague today. Our camp is some miles off. Have heard that letters are in for some of us, but have not seen them. Do continue writing. We heard last mail brought only three letters, and all these for pro-slavery men. It is said that both the Lawrence and Osawatomie men, when ruffians came on them, either hid or gave up their arms, and that their leading men counseled them to take such a course. May God bless and keep you all. Your affectionate husband and father, John Brown. P.S. Ellen and Wealthy are staying at Osawatomie.